This morning, I have the pleasure of sharing with you uh, a certain area in my life where uh, I continuously uh, have seen Jesus uh, be revealed to me uh, in my life. <coughs> and this area, excuse me, one second. <coughs> this area is in um, Rockwell City. And uh, it's inside the walls of the Church of the Damascus Road, uh, which is inside the walls of the North uh, Central Correctional Facility uh, there in Rockwell City. Uh, as a side note, which will be relevant uh, later in a few minutes, uh, Church of Damascus Road is actually uh, named off of Acts 9, uh, which is the story of Saul uh, being converted to Paul on the road into Damascus. Uh, so as many of you know, my father Jeff has been involved with uh, a program called Brothers in Blue, which is prison ministries, and <coughs> he's been involved with that for about uh, 15 years now, um, and at the beginning when he started it, uh, when I was younger, uh, him going down to the prison really to me meant, uh, cool, now I get to make this fun joke about, uh, I get to tell people that, oh yeah, my dad's in prison for the weekend, or yeah, my dad's in prison right now, and then just laugh at their reactions. Uh, but the more he went and the more he came back and uh, we sat and talked about it and he shared his experiences with me, uh, the more interested and intrigued I got um, by the work that he was doing down there. Uh, and, you know, I kind of put a bug in his ear that I wanted to uh, go down sometime and visit uh, and go to church with them uh, on a Thursday night because they hold uh, church services on Thursday nights there. Uh, finally, um, a few years back, I don't specifically remember when because, you know, I'm getting old now and my memory, <laughs> you know, fades me. Yeah, lots of groans. That's what I was hoping for. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I finally got to go down to Rockwell City with him. Um, and on the way down, uh, you know, I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, you know, we all have the perceived notion that uh, prisoners – are the worst of the worst sinners, right? Because, you know, one sin can be worse than another one, uh, which we know that's not true, but that's kind of the perce perceived notion we get is that, well, they're in prison because, you know, they may have sinned worse than we have. Uh, so you go into the prison with that perceived notion, or at least, you know, I did a little uh, apprehensive about it because you don't know what to expect, even though I've heard a lot from my father about the guys inside. Uh, so we go in and, and you check in, you put all your stuff in the locker, you go through the metal detector, you know, make sure you're not concealing anything. Uh, they open up the gates for you, and you walk in, and you're inside the fence. Uh, and at that time, when I went, they weren't in their new building yet, uh, so we packed into this little room, and I mean literally packed into this tiny room. Um, but a as you walk in, uh, I saw I walked in behind my father, and Ahead of him, I just saw lots of bright faces that were over the top, overjoyed, excited to see my father. Um, okay. Uh, I didn't think he was that cool, but, um, you know, these guys seem to really enjoy him. So, hey, you know, by all means, get overjoyed to see him. Someone has to. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm kidding. My dad's great. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, so it was really cool to see those guys just get super pumped to see my dad. Uh, so, you know, that takes an edge off a little bit uh, going in there. Dad starts doing the introductions. Uh, one thing you notice when you go in there is there's, first of all, introductions, uh, handshakes, hugs, and smiles when you go in. Uh, everyone's excited to see you, and they can't wait to come up, shake your hand, give you a hug, and tell you hi and ask how your day has been. Um, which is really cool. That relaxes you right away when you go in. Um, then we sit down, and, and the pastor there is Pastor Paul Stone. Great guy, um, very funny, um, very casual. Uh, I think he's he's been here before uh, to to speak and, and give a sermon. So some of you may have uh, been here for that. Great guy. Uh, so he stands up at the beginning, gives his monologue, uh, is what I'll call it because uh, it is kind of sometimes turns into a comedy routine. Uh, but he gives updates on prisoners who have been released or, or, you know, into the aftercare system and uh, have written letters back, and he, he gives updates on them. And then uh, he, he talks about, uh, you know, guys that might be getting out, 
uh, just different updates on things. He d has people do introductions, whether they're uh, insiders, inmates uh, that are there for the first time, or guests visiting, he has them introduce where they're from. Uh, and then he makes fun of you or for whoever he wants uh, for whatever, uh, which is awesome. So that's, that's cool. Uh, and then right away we go into the first hymn. Everyone stands up, and that's when the most glorious moment happens for me every time I go in there. That first song, all the guys stand up, and the piano plays, and everyone is singing at the very top of their lungs, whether they're the best singer or the worst singer. Uh, it's just the sound of tons of, of grown men singing at the top of their lungs, off key, off pitch, sometimes off rhythm, but it's the greatest sound that I've ever heard in my life. It's still, uh, you know, the very first time kind of knocks you off your feet and gives you chills, and even the 50th time knocks you off your feet and gives you chills uh, because it's just such an amazing sound to hear a lot of guys, that many guys in prison uh, just full, open-heartedly uh, worshiping uh, our God, which is awesome. Uh, let's see. And then uh, later on in the service, men get up. Uh, they, they do the, the readings, the, the first and second lesson, you know. Uh, and then Pastor Stone gets up, gives his message, uh, which is usually awesome. Uh, sometimes they have special music during communion. We do take communion together. And then uh, just like we do in the church here, we share the peace and we wander around uh, at that time in a very small space. Uh, so you just kind of shuffling and uh, brushing elbows and shoulders and shaking hands and giving hugs. Uh, and then after that, we do a little bit of, bit of a closing. And then towards the end of the, or after the service, there's a time where you can stand around and talk with the inmates, really get to know them. Uh, and, and at that very moment for me, the first time I went there, standing there talking uh, to some of the guys about uh, school, uh, where I live, uh, talking about, you know, our sports teams, and we're chatting about, you know, recent sports happenings, things like that. I, uh, I found myself. I, I got kind of lost in the moment, and totally forgot where I was, uh, and realized, oh, these are men, just like you and I, uh, just like everyone else. They're just normal human beings. Uh, they're interested in the same things. They're not scary. They're not mean. Uh, th they're just all really nice guys. So in that moment, for me. You know, I kind of discovered, all right, wow, you know, this is really cool. I, I want to experience this again. Uh, and, you know, like Jesus was really speaking to me in that moment that, uh, you know, the, the perceived notions that we have uh, should be broken and that uh, these are all just normal guys and, and everyone needs to know about them. So let's see. I'm losing my place here. Okay, yeah, so I want to go back to uh, the reading we had, Matthew 25. Uh, and and the certain part, 35 and 36, uh, where Jesus says, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then a few verses later, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Um, I see this as it, it can be translated in a lot of different ways, but this speaks to me uh, in the sense that uh, it's, it's a calling. I, I ask myself, what if this text is, is calling me to reach out and visit the actual prisoners in the prison and break bread with them? After all, uh, these prisoners need the bread and cup just as much as you and I both do because they're just everyday people like you and I. Uh, I felt very strongly about wanting to return and worship again. Uh, I wanted to get these, get to know these guys on a more personal level. I uh, I wanted to uh, be there so I could uh, build a relationship with them and help them grow in their faith uh, journey. And then also, I realized, you know, now that I've been there um, several times, they're helping me grow in my faith journey and in my life as well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of they have a lot of really good advice because obviously these are guys who have been through some stuff before. So uh, I, I take every t op every opportunity I can get to chat with these uh, with these guys uh, as a blessing. Uh, so 
thankfully, I was blessed with the opportunity to continue to go there. Uh, this summer, I lived in Rockwell City, uh, only a, just a, a short distance from the prison. Uh, so I, I did my training, got my volunteer badge so I could go in uh, on Thursday night. Uh, so that's what I did almost every Thursday night. Uh, I would, you know, if I could get off work in time, I would go in uh, and go worship with the inmates. And, and I built uh, a lot of really great relationships, uh, met a lot of really great guys. Uh, and, and to me, living in Rockwell City, I don't know if any of you have been to Rockwell City, but there's not a plethora of people in their 20s in Rockwell City. So social interaction for me was very slim to none. Uh, so every week I look forward to Thursday nights. Thursday nights was my interaction night. That was my night to meet with friends. You know, I, I went to work. I'd come home every day of the week and just sit alone, you know, watch some TV, play some Xbox, eat way too much pizza, and go to bed. So Thursday nights were the highlight of my week every week. And it was interesting because going in there, before I left every Thursday, at least one of me would say, oh, we hope to see you again next week. And I always said, of course you'll see me next week. You guys are the only friends I have in Rockwell City. Like, <laughs> you guys are my social interaction. Of course I'm coming. Like, I'm not going to pass up a day to hang out with my buddies, you know. Uh, so, like I said, every 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 Thursday I, I would – I would hopefully try to go in there and, you know, if I could, you know, make up some excuse to get off work super early or get all my work done, I would try to get off a little bit earlier and, and go in earlier and uh, hang out with Pastor Stone and some of the inmates uh, before church started. And that's a, an awesome time to really sit down and, and uh, chat with them. You, you meet a little bit of, of, of ev every type of person inside the prison. Uh, and to me, that just, it's amazing to me that uh, God can put these people in front of you for a reason. You know, I've learned a lot of things uh, from from a lot of guys inside, and I've built relationships, and 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 those relationships turn into you know the aftercare reentry team, where they get to to be when they when it comes time for them to be released. You know, you had that relationship. Uh, you know, here in Spencer, uh, you had that relationship with the MA who comes out, and and you can help them continue to stay on you know the right path and, and continue to do well. So I think those are all blessings. Uh, that I've experienced. Um, I also feel, re feel really blessed because I actually accepted a job offer uh, in Kinnearum, which is right north of uh, Rockwell City. If you don't know about it, don't worry. There's not a whole lot of people that know about it, but you drive past it every time you're on Highway 20. Uh, but I, but I, I did, um, you know, tomorrow, actually, well, tonight, I'll be moving to Manson, uh, so I will have the chance to continue uh, on Thursdays, if now that I'm not an intern, it's going to be a little bit easier for me to probably get off work a little earlier on Thursdays because I can kind of decide, you know, when I can do things. But um, so I'm going to, you know, I can continue to, to uh, get off on Thursdays and, and, and go see these guys uh, and continue these relationships and make new relationships and build new relationships and uh, continue to get that experience. And, uh, you know, I can come back and continue to share about it. You know, if you if you uh, you know feel so moved, you, you can talk to to Jeff or or Steve or um, uh, Bill Nitzel about going down sometime with them uh, down to the prison. I, I highly encourage it. They have a much bigger compared to their last uh, chapel, a much bigger room, uh, and I know those guys are always excited to see uh, new faces and and love meeting new people. Uh, and and I know that everyone down there would enjoy them, uh, and and Jan and come January uh, in the next few weeks I'll be uh, doing Vita Cristo for the first time, which I'm very excited about. Uh, you know that'll help me with my faith journey into the adult world, but it also will give me the opportunity now to do uh, Brothers in Blue, so I'll be able to uh, spend a weekend with uh, uh, the inmates and get to know them even deeper. Because um, right now after church. The time slot that you get to chat with everyone is just simply not long enough for me because Pastor Stone basically has to drag me by my shirt out of there and goes, okay, for real, you really, it's time to go now. Otherwise, you know, you're going to get locked up in here. And, um, well, you know, 
that's probably not good. Uh, but so that, that time is just not long enough, so I'm, I'm looking forward to be able to go in on those weekends. Uh, just to close here, uh, in a few days, we'll be welcoming in the new year. Um, and in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, and the new is here. So it's that time of year where people are moving on from 2014, the old, and uh, moving into 2015 and setting goals and resolutions. In the next few days, when you are thinking about your goals for this upcoming year, I invite you to keep your heart and mind open for Jesus to be revealed in your lives. The same Jesus who wants to work in my life and yours as well. What could Jesus do in our lives if we surrendered and gave complete control of our lives to him, just as Paul did on the road to Damascus?